Dear friends, next Sunday we are going to celebrate the ascension of the blessed Lord. And before that, we have this wonderful passage for our reflection. If you allow me, you will keep my commandments. Now, the Acts of the Apostles, the first reading, is a wonderful another gospel for our reflection. We find here Philip, who was filled with the Holy Spirit, goes to the town of Samaria to preach the word of God, which was considered a town or a place or a region never admissible for the ordinary Jews. Jews were practically not welcome and they were not treated well. But then Philip, with all this courage and power, the power of the Holy Spirit, after the Pentecost, goes to Samaria and he explains, preaches to them this word from Christ. And what was he preaching? Most probably he was preaching about the resurrection of Christ, which perhaps the Samaritans never heard ever till that moment. And when they heard this good news of the resurrection, they were all filled with joy. Miracles happened. People who were possessed, the demons came out, the paralyzed and the lame were able to walk, and they rejoiced and accepted this wonderful message. This literal thing happens in many of the villages today, in remote areas, when the missionaries go and preach the word of God. You know, when there is hope, people will always flock. You know, in this world, we require hope. And from where that hope comes to us, that comes to us from the resurrection of Christ. We have a lot of reasons to be hopeless. But then one thing that keeps us alive and hopeful is the message of Christ and the message of the resurrection. You can just imagine, dear friends, in our own lives, if we think that this life is going to be over just with this life, and there is nothing else to hope for, many of us will live a life of total sadness, pessimism, darkness, and pain. And perhaps, many of us will think, when this is going to be over, but then when there is hope, we are not going to give up so easily. That's why the Samaritans, we know that long back Jesus had gone to that village and the Samaritan woman was filled with that joy when Jesus said, I am going to give you the living water. And the woman asked, give me that water. And she got the entire village back to Christ. And they were also filled with that hope in the person of Jesus. And that is what must fill us with that joy. Now what happens? When the apostles heard this good news that they had accepted Philip and his message, they sent Peter and John from Jerusalem. You know, that is the conclave of the apostles. They had to decide. Now, we always thought that Peter is the head and they had to decide even for the head to go to Samaria. They sent Peter and John and they knew that these people in Samaria had not received the Holy Spirit and they pray for the Holy Spirit. That is what we are celebrating in the church all the time. You know, when we receive the, the sacrament of confirmation, Bishop comes and anoints and the Holy Spirit come upon, comes upon those who receive the sacrament of confirmation. And that is why here what we find John and Peter practically resemble or represent Christ himself as Pope or the Bishop. They come in the early church to a territory which was missionary for them in the town of Samaria where they pray for the Holy Spirit and they get that power. They get that strength. They get that courage. Dear friends, when we look at the second reading, St. Peter again insists that we need to be courageous 
and we need to have that defense in ourselves we need to defend that hope we have received before that he says let us sanctify in our hearts christ as lord that means we need to keep christ as the center of our hearts you know when christ is the center of our hearts then he will lead us he will guide us he will take us to the place which we do not know and that is what the hope of christ that's why the disciples say peter says sanctify in your hearts christ as lord and then keep your defense very strong you know in my in my christly life i was asked so many questions by people belonging to other religions buddhists muslims hindus that does not happen in this society of canada maybe sometimes you know i have heard some people coming and telling me father that person was aggressively asking me about our faith and resurrection and so on now peter says if you want to defend your hope that you have received do it gently and reverently you know we need to respect people we cannot say that oh i have received i have the fullness of faith and without becoming christians you cannot enter into heaven and we boss over people absolutely not peter says do it kindly reverently and that should be the christian spirit and people will abuse you people say all sorts of things and that's why jesus very clearly says you will be persecuted because i have been persecuted in the world people will abuse us persecute us but then we have to do that catechesis with that gentleness and kindness as christ has suffered we too will suffer in the world let us come to the gospel passage when jesus says if you love me keep my commandments and i will ask the father for the advocate you will receive him because he is the spirit of truth the world does not receive because the world does not know him the world cannot recognize him now what is the meaning of jesus saying if you love me keep my commandments what are the commandments of christ we know through all the readings from the gospels everything boils down to one commandment that is the commandment of love loving god with all our heart soul and strength and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves but then jesus spells out his commandment in the beatitudes the wonderful beautiful beatitudes blessed are the pure in heart or they shall see god you know someone asked me how can i see god when my heart is pure you know that purity you can see through the glass that is pure when the glass is clean you can see your own reflection if it is a glass to be seen or if the glass is very clean you can see through it that's why when our heart is pure we are capable of seeing god around us all the time that is what these mighty mystics who have written wonderful beautiful reflections on mysticism who have already said that when our heart is pure we are capable of seeing god everywhere because god is everywhere the face of god the glory of god the beautiful sunshine everything is created by god provided our heart is pure and then jesus says blessed are the peacemakers they will be called sons and daughters of god you know what we need dear friends first of all we require that peace that's why jesus says this is my commandment if you don't have that peace you cannot give, give that peace to others there will be always war within me i always will be fighting with myself or i will be fighting with others in my heart without swords and machine guns but then I, my mind will go 
with the spirit of revenge hatred arrogance pride but then if we are peacemakers in the society in the community in our family we will be called sons and daughters of god this beautiful beatitudes are the commandments of christ and when we receive these commandments jesus says my father will send you the advocate who will be with you and in you therefore shortly we will be celebrating pentecost after the ascension of our blessed lord and what is this pentecost when these disciples received the power of the holy spirit they were fearless soldiers of christ they went out to proclaim the good news and what is this good news in our daily lives when we have the spirit of christ we should be warriors of peace we should be warriors of purity we should be the warriors of meekness we should be merciful that we may receive mercy from god and that is the commandment of christ and then jesus says if you abide in me as i am in you as i am with the father then finally you keep my commandments and i will reveal myself to you that is the last sentence of today's gospel passage if with a revelation of christ has to come to us there should be the commandment of christ deep within our hearts we must to walk with christ with the spirit the paraclete the holy spirit we receive and then we can see that revelation of jesus christ dear friends there are many saints even today you know we should not be very pessimistic about the catholic church or i i would consider the universal church why should we consider only catholic church the universal church where the gospel is preached where mighty things really happen even today millions of miracles happening today people getting healed the power of the holy spirit coming upon them and the gospel is preached today even more powerfully that is a great satisfaction for us today now sometimes i am very keen on finding out details about the word of god that is preached in other countries even in north korean country there are today missionaries preaching and teaching and spreading god's kingdom in china they predict that in another 25 years there will be more than 100 to 150 million christians what about my own country i am always excited to think about my country think about evangelization you might think that oh if you are think about evangelization why have you come to canada that's another story but then in my country dear friends far and wide in many villages and territories in nook and corner of my of my country there are people powerfully preaching the word of god few years ago there were more than 150 churches destroyed in a particular region and christians were persecuted but today double the amount number of churches are built people are given freedom to preach the word of god that is the miracle that keep on happening even today difference that is what we find from the first reading philip going to samaria who was a powerful instrument of god in that pagan territory but he was so filled with the spirit to spread the kingdom of christ as we go home today dear friends let us have this clear assurance in our hearts that if we have the spirit of christ deep within us if we are moved by the spirit of christ because we have to pray for the spirit of christ to come and dwell within us we will be courageous people in spite of all the failures and mistakes and miseries and poverty and uh, illness or sickness because the strength of god is deep in our hearts and he will move us even to accept difficult moments and defeats in our lives 
because that is the power of god strengthening us for that we need to have that strong faith faith as jesus demanded from his disciples if you love me keep my commandments and i will love you and you will be loved by my father and finally i will reveal myself to you kindly rise we profess our faith